Welcome to Getting More, it's Richard Mark to turn you in. Today I'm here with Peter Lakovic. How are you? Good Richard, how are you? Pronunciation perfect, is it? Spot on mate, perfect. Excellent. Now Peter is from Impact Training, one of the leaders in um, you know, sales for the fitness industry, is that right me to say? Yeah, thanks for saying so, but yeah, pretty much our specialty is working on the, the business side of the fitness industry, not so much you know, personal training and all that kind of stuff in doing it, but actually the business side of it. So not growing money. biceps and triceps? We're not the biceps about. and triceps, profit and loss statements. We're talking about making the wallet a bit fatter. That's the one, mate, yeah. Awesome. So tell me, I, I really want to get in this session um, and get you some, get, I guess get the audience some really good tips of how to make better sales, how to make more profit. Yep. But your story is a pretty cool one. Tell me about how you get into uh, you know impact, how it's come about, and why you know why you guys are leaders now in sales. Um, I guess I started in the industry. Um, I, I guess like most people out there, I love sport. Always played sport as a youngster, so yeah. from the age of pretty much four. I uh, went to uni, did science and maths and um, and phys ed. But phys ed is what kept me sane going through university. So it was always that sports type of stuff. Um, bought my first mem- mem- gym membership when I was 14. Uh, saved up all my pennies and I think I paid about 140 bucks. Mum and dad paid balance. Annual, annual membership, yeah? It was, a, well, it was a lifetime a membership lifetime. <laughs> um, to a health club that went bust three months later. Right. Uh, any surprise, I was dumb enough to buy a, a gym membership and a lifetime health club membership. So I was really upset because all my hard, hard earned pocket money got all three months. Yeah, so. gone. Pretty much so. Oh, the days. Yeah, that was the uh, mid eighties, early eighties to mid eighties. So, uh, but yeah, I got the fitness, fitness industry by pure accident. Um, a partner I was going out with at the time, she um, saw a job for a, a salesperson, uh, rang me up and said I was doing a bit of work for the Ministry of Sport and Recreation after uni, and so she pretty much said to me, um, "Can you go check it out for me?" And yeah. I said, "Well, you know what? Um, why don't you just ask these questions?" She said, "Oh, you'll ask better questions. Can you go for me?" So I pretty much went for a job interview for her, <laughs> and they gave me the job. Okay. Um, before then, I was cleaning benches and picking up weights and dumbbells and doing a couple of programs here and there for people at the local gym down the road that I was a member of. Okay. Just helping out a mate of mine, and become a, a personal trainer by defunct. Right. Before the heydays um, of the personal training courses. Well, you didn't need a course. Yeah. You just if you look fit, people will pay you money. Or pay you. And my first ever client actually got as a personal trainer was when a client just came up to me and I was covering the desk for a mate of mine who was running the gym and he and she came in for an assessment, a program, he wasn't there. Yeah. So I did the assessment from the program for her. And she actually said to me, hey, after that, um, can we do some more one-on-one training together? I said, yeah, whenever you come in from here, I'll do a workout with you, sure. not knowing what she meant. Right. Long story short, she said, no, I want to train with you, how much do you charge? And I had no idea what they charged. So I said, have you done personal training before? She goes, oh, about six months ago. I said, what they charge? He goes, they charge about 35 bucks an hour. And I said, I charge the same. <laughs> and that's how I got my first client. Awesome. Um, and then I formally got into it when I went for that job interview for my, for my okay. partner at the time. Yep. And um, ended up giving it to me. So that's how I got into more the sales side of it. And then I um, had a pretty good first week. I broke the sales record in my first week there. And then after three and a half weeks, I made me the sales manager. After four and a half weeks, I was managing a club. Okay. So obviously you had sales born in your, your genetics. Do you think or what? <laughs> um, I get it from my dad. Okay. My dad grew businesses. I worked in my dad's business since I was about eight. Um, child labor. There was no, no wages labor, back right? then. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. You worked for free when you worked for a European family. <laughs> um, so it was just... Child labour, I didn't get started getting paid until I was about 14 or 15, but he always had businesses, always worked right. with my dad. Okay. And I just, he always said one thing, whatever you do, just be the best at it. Yep. If you work for as a garbo, be the best at it, because someone I will like see that. you and they'll promote you for it. That's great. So I just just did what I thought was, you know, fitness industry is something where you talk to people, they give you money. Yeah, it's true. a pretty good so industry. It's... If you can help fix them, whatever they want fixed, um, you know, a great man once said, help people get what they want, always get what you want. Mm-hmm. So that was always my mindset when someone came to the fitness industry, help them get a training plan, it's going to help them get a result. And then I consult lots of memberships and PT because of it. So you focus more on the gym, the, or the gym memberships, or more personal trainers? Or? Um, I did both, because I was a personal trainer and I wanted to get clients. Um, and then we, as the membership sales team, we fed the personal trainers as well. Yeah. So I was very, and this is probably one of the biggest things why I think I was successful in the fitness industry, was I never sold a gym membership, I never sold a PT pack. I sold a training plan, that was it. So someone come in, wanting a result, my headspace was, well, you need to train once or twice a week on your own, once or twice a week with a trainer, but this is what you should do. And people just bought it. So I'd sell at it's least- It's very different mindset, isn't it? It's very well, different to what most people be saying, okay, yeah, get your 10 pack, you're selling a training program, they're coming in for a prescription. That's what I found out later. After I did studies with you know, uh, human behavior, uh, NLP, yep. uh, business studies, 
Um, and once I did all that, I realised why I was successful at what I did and why I got promoted really, really quickly. Because after that, I became an area manager, then I had a public business, and we had 15 health clubs. Mm. So, but what we did different was we, we sold training. Mm. We didn't sell memberships. We didn't sell PT packs. It was, what's the best training plan to help you get to where you want to be? And I never felt like I was selling one day in my life. I was only ever helping people. And that creates and flows through the methodology we have at Impact Training is that our methodology is about communication techniques, not about heavy, pushy sales techniques. Because yep. my experience is it just doesn't work that way. And I was selling PT, you know, 1500 bucks for 30 sessions back in the late 80s, early 90s. Now, that's more than what some people charge today. Yep. But to me, it means it's not about price. It's about what you deliver someone. And that just works. So that's kind of our philosophies right now is, is packaging up a really easy way to get people to want the product. Mm -hmm. And that's what we help fitness businesses do. And that's probably, I guess, the biggest trick is, is finding what they want and Correct. then selling what they, what they need, I guess. Yep. So it's a need, then not a what. I mean, what's the number one result most people want when they come to a health club? Weight loss. Weight loss. Or weight loss, yeah. How many health clubs out there have a weight loss program? Probably not many. But that's 85% of your market. Yeah. It makes no sense. Mm. Or do they, have that, do they package it that way? Mm. Are the membership consultants told to sell it or train it that way? Probably not. Mm. So Very good it's, point. it's knowing the right thing. Because every business is different. We work with health clubs that have, we started with one that had 17 members. We do pre sales. We have health clubs with 500 members, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and chains that have over 100,000. Everyone's different. So I guess. What we're really good at is looking at your club, your studio, and knowing what's the best method for you, your guys, to sell and get more clients on board. Every club is different, every studio is so different. everything customised. It has to be nowadays. The, the market you're located in, whether it's CBD, whether it's out west, whether you're local, whether you're suburban, whether yep. you're a chain, whether you've got, you're surrounded by 24 hour clubs around you, whether you've got Fitness First up the road, um, whether you've got Genesis or Phoenix around the corner, yep. it doesn't matter what type of business you have, you know, to make sure it tailors to your demographic and your market, but also the infrastructure you have in your club. What type of staff do you have? Are they full-time? Are they casuals? Are they part-time? Do you have whoever's at reception, does the personal training, does the sale, takes the inquiry, you have set membership consultants. Every business is different. Yeah. So what we're masterful at is actually tailoring a protocol that suits your business. So you basically can go into a location, go into a gym, and um, you know, put the impact method in there and get them a, a program structured that in that time frame when you're there, is that right? Yeah, we, we work out what's the best plan of attack for your club. Yeah. You know, I've got a little uh, a club up in Queensland that I see on a regular basis and, and they're multi-skilled. So whoever's at front desk, we'll do the boxing class, we'll take you for the initial program, we'll answer the phone, we'll say hello, we'll say goodbye. It's not your typical receptionist answers the phone, puts it through to a membership consultant and they do a follow-up. Yeah. So their protocol was, was very different. The methodologies that Impact have, we can implement the same, but the way we do it can be very, very different. And that's the tailoring part. Excellent. And um, tell me a bit about, I guess, some results, some, I guess, the negatives that you see in the industry. Like, you know, what are the biggest mistakes you're seeing right now? Yeah. And then what are the pluses that your clients and mean some good results that your clients are getting? A lot of challenges that clubs are having right now is, it's both sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. And sales and marketing have to talk to each other. You really have to have a right strategy in place. I've seen a lot of people say that, you know, referrals at point of sale don't work, or lead boxes don't work, yeah. or I hate doing outreach and doing all that kind of stuff. Where if you have the right strategy behind it, it works really, really well. The biggest mistake is to do one thing and think that one thing's gonna work. Um, you've got to have the right strategy in place, but you've got to know what is your market, and whatever you do, do that really, really well. Because what works at one club doesn't always work. And how do you know what's club. actually going to work well? Is it top trial and error? Or? Um, you look at how are you positioning yourself in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. How are you positioning yourself to your competitors? When we had one club down, down south in Miranda Way, where Fitness First opened, literally you walk out the front of this club, yeah. you take three steps left, and there's a set of stairs, and upstairs is Fitness First. So the landlord let them open a club up right up from this club that we've been training for years. Right. Now they still had growth in the next six months, even though Fitness First has just opened upstairs from them. Different market. Well, it's, you have to niche yourself. What do you do different? What do you do the same? And how do you make people understand that? It's how do you let everyone know how you do what you do compared to everyone else? And what do you do differently? Yeah. And how do you deliver that? How do you package it up? If you're trying to be apples against apples, well, the best club, the biggest club, the cheapest price, or the most marketing is going to win, pretty much. So it's about knowing if you're out there right now, 
what are you doing that's making yourself stand out? Does it suit the culture of the business of the people that you have? Does it suit that? For example, the club I was talking about in Queensland, yep. it didn't suit that people come in, they sit down, they do a big needs analysis, they sit down, they take them for a big tour of the club, they sit down, they do a price presentation and close them. It didn't suit the culture of the staff. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a big club, so the tour wasn't that fancy schmancy. So it was actually more of a negative to do a tour that way. Right. So we had to change their whole sales process to suit what the, what the trainers like because the salesperson were trainers, the old boxing coaches, and they we had a different approach there. Similar methodologies, but just implemented a different way. So know who you are and know what you're doing, and then you can have really, really massive success. I mean, we have a club in Perth that, we, that we've been training for gee, nearly 10 years now. And um, I like that, continuing training for 10 years. Well, that's probably a strategy right there, actually continuing to get results. Well, that's what, I mean, we'll only be in the business if we're helping get results. Good. And 90% of all our clients, we do on an ongoing basis because just like a personal trainer, you can't have one PT session and, and look fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So they only get us back because we help keeping them grow their business, whether it's retention, increasing average dollar per sale, uh, decreasing the, the lead per marketing cost. Yeah. Um, you get turnover of staff all the time. Um, most of the clubs we work with have a higher staff retention than all the other clubs. Because if your team are happy, successful, making money, they're going to stay. Yeah. They won't look for other yep. things out there. So it's a combination of a lot of things. Very good tips there. If you could, uh, I guess, for people that are, I guess, getting just into sales, um, yep. you know, mentioned it before sales and marketing, you know, there's, so let's say they've got a limited budget, where do they put it? They, do they put it in the marketing or do they put it in like getting a sales team? Or do you have to, or is it, do you have to get them to do the same thing? Okay, magic question. Um, is that a question everybody asks, is it? They do, and everyone wants an answer to what's the, what's the little silver bullet. Yeah. yeah. And I think the first thing is, you've got to have good data. Um, numbers don't lie. Mm. Numbers don't get emotional. They tell you the truth. Mm. And when you've got good data, you can make great decisions. Right. So you'll then know where are your leads coming from. For example, we had a club that said um, that we've been training for a while. We only get four or five inquiries a day. So sure. we need to spend more marketing. Yeah. So now there's a direct inquiry, there's an indirect inquiry. A direct inquiry is ring, ring, thanks for calling Richard's Health Club. Yeah. This is Peter. Hi, how much are your memberships? Can I speak to someone about memberships? Uh, what's the price for a membership? Do you do casual workouts? So they're directly asking about yeah. memberships. Sure. Then you have indirect inquiries. People that ring up and say, do you have pump? What time do you open? What time do you close on the weekend? Do you guys have a crash? Do you have a pool? Do you do Pilates? Which do you most do people yoga? would ask. Yes, and most frontline reception answer, sure, we have a pump class on at 4.30 tonight. Thank you very much, they hang up. See that. Now that's what we call an indirect inquiry. Do we know if that person's a member or not? Yeah. And we did some phone shops and realized that almost for every minimum, on average, at least for one direct inquiry, you got an indirect inquiry. So they're actually getting 10 inquiries a day, they didn't know it. So we didn't have the right data to say, spend, we need more leads. They had the leads. Yep. They didn't know one, how to capture them, yep. two, how to convert them. Mm. Does that make sense? Yep. I saw another club and they said, yeah, no, we close about 70% and 80% of our leads come from referrals. Sure. But they couldn't quantify that. So before we did anything, we did two weeks worth of data first and realized that the figures were completely not what they thought they would just, be. Just approximate figures. Absolutely, because people come in and they say, oh, yeah, I saw the club because a friend of mine. But when you actually ask them where they found out, it actually wasn't a friend of theirs. Okay. It was something that motivated them to ask their friend to come in. But what caused them to first make that first inquiry was different. Mm. And the number of inquiries were completely different. So until we get good data, it's hard to say spend it on marketing, spending on sales. But you know, you can spend, I've, I've spent thousands of dollars in a marketing campaign and it just didn't work. Yeah. You know, I, I remember my staff at my third club, um, took the piss out of me because we used to do a marketing, we, we, I spent months creating a marketing plan, a friend of mine was, was a graphic designer, another friend of mine was great at advertising and, and calligraphy and, and the right colours to use and all that kind of stuff and I had a meeting with my guy and said, this marketing campaign this month is going to kill it, you right. sales guys are going to just be so inundated with this, it's gonna come oh it's, <laughs> get ready, this phone's going to ring off the hook, you know, yep. and we didn't have internet back those days, so yep. it was just all phone inquiries or walking traffic, yep. I think we got four inquiries a week. Right. Seriously, it was the biggest dud. The Friday, three months later, we went out um, on a Friday of someone's birthday, and I got the local local guy from the local paper rang me and said, "Pete, we've got a um, 
I can give you a half pager for like a, a business card size price. Yeah. Got to get it to me before o'clock today. Right. And I said, mate, I'm at the pub, I've had a few drinks. He goes, listen, if you get it to me in the next half an hour, I can give it to you for that. So I got a beer coaster. I created <laughs> something just on a spur of a moment. Yeah. Um, gave it to one of my, rang the guys on the phone at the club and said, can you do this on a bit of paper and fax it through, because faxes are still good. Oh, faxes. Faxes, yeah. fax it through to the editor at the local rag. Yeah. We ran that campaign. My expectations were zero. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, it was our best campaign that year. So what was the difference? I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they said. Pete, my advertising, um, we got a marketing meeting, let's go to the local pub. You just don't know with marketing sometimes what's going to work. Right. Yeah. But if your team have a set process to follow, they've got a structure to follow, yeah. Yeah, then you can, always, you can only guarantee the appointments you make yourself. You can't guarantee a walking, you can't guarantee a web inquiry, you can't guarantee a phone in. But if I'm generating my own leads and I have a sales process to follow where I'm going to convert 78% of them, you can guarantee that. Got you. So if you were to throw money one way or another, I would say give me a business with a person with a good attitude and I'll teach them the skills to create their own leads and convert them, then put a whole lot of money into marketing and hope they buy. Hope it works. Um, if you've got good data, then you can make that best decision. So one, ask yourself, have I got good accurate data that is factual? Because mm -hmm. then you can make good decisions from that. It's a very good tip. Your knowledge is super, I would just we could talk all day here really, but um, let's just um, finish it up and I guess I see this uh, impact trading sales. For those who are, I guess, wanting to get started, and, yep. and, and is this the best way to start? Because it's an online platform. Some solid tips, talk about yep. this for a little bit. Okay, we, we've been training health clubs now since, I think, 94. Yeah. Uh, I joined Steve at Impact in 98. We've been yep. running the company together since then. And there's only 30 days a month. So we train a lot of businesses and most of it's ongoing. So You're always on the road traveling. My right? diary is booked out 12 months in advance. Yeah. You know, the first Tuesday of each month is your club. The second Wednesday of every month is that club. And yeah. we continually help these businesses regularly get to success. So we want to... It's not like, by the way, about your style of training. Is that it's actually face-to-face. -face. It's not... It, it's real stuff. It's real training. You're actually getting some real hands-on approach, which is great. Clubs like the fact that we can work with your team one-on-one -on -one yeah. or as a group yeah. and do whatever we need to, see the business, rip it apart, and give you the tools to make it successful. And being on site, we can do that really, really powerfully. Yeah. Yeah. And that's worked really, really well. But we're getting in the with so many people saying, I need better help with my personal training studio. I've just become a personal trainer. I'm opening up my own club. I yeah. do indoor training. I've got a new health club I'm running. Um, we, we just going from that transition of multi-skill staff to salespeople. Yeah. And there's so many businesses out there right now. I mean, the fitness industry is one of the fastest growing industries out there. Mm. Um, to cater for that and with technology nowadays, we started impactonlinesite.com. Yeah. And that's where you can jump online and get online sales training. Once a fortnight, you'll get one of our uh, module notes. You'll get an audio that goes with it with a workbook. Yeah. Um, you'll get that each fortnight that your team or you can work through on a regular basis. Um, once a month, you'll get an industry expert interview so you can listen to other people, what they're doing, and pick their brain as well. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's silly. It's less than 10 bucks a week to do that, to have that online component. So we're now we're really promoting to the people, just do something. Just do go. something to get a systemized process going for your business to be successful. And I think it's really important because, I mean, you know, the business owners there, even those personal trainers getting into it, you know, wanting to create a much bigger business, but yeah. going from that, I guess, personal trainer doing everything himself to getting a team, that's where I guess they need to start training their team. To you be like replicate that. yourself. Exactly. And, uh, you know, when I started becoming an area manager and I had two clubs, three clubs, four clubs, five clubs, um, when I had two or three, I was super successful. When we got to five or six, a couple were struggling because I couldn't be everywhere. Sure. And that's when I realized, I had to pull myself out, systemize what I did, realize why I was successful, then train it to everybody. And that's when we grew to a train of 15 because we had the system made it work. Yeah. So if you can systemize that, and doing some online stuff, it's easy. You can do 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time, learn something, use it, see the success, come back, listen to the audio, do the workbook, do a couple yeah. of your own role plays and practices, go and use it and just build on it. And over a period of time, you'll get all the modules and you, and you can listen to them and just work through them and eventually just get really good at what you do well. I mean, trainers spend so much time educating themselves when it comes to oh, yeah. human anatomy, yeah. physiology, energy systems, dietary plans. And that's all the stuff to change the body shape. But if you haven't got a body shape to change, mm -hmm. 
because you haven't sold or marketed well, then all those skills are pointless. Very good point. So that's the online stuff. It's it's snappy, it's easy, and it's something that we can grow on, and that library is going to grow even further. But right now, it's just a really simple process. Started. It's really affordable, so you can start doing something to get better at what you do. Okay, we'll put the website down here anyway. Impact, Impact also. online site. We'll put all the websites down and how to contact Peter and that sort of stuff. But thank you very much. My it's pleasure. A pleasure. Thank you so much. Great to have you. And uh, we'll see you later. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.